So you want to prioritize your mental health, but what does that really look like? What are the main foundations of this, the key pieces that you can be cultivating in your life? In this video, we'll be talking about one of those main foundations of mental health, which is rhythms of work and rest. My name is Dr. Park. I'm a psychologist for youth. And here at Through the Waters, we nurture youth mental health. If we look at the way that creation around us has been orchestrated, it has a beautiful cycle of seasons built into it that ebb and flow throughout each year. There are seasons of planting, watering, and nurturing, seasons of growth and new life, seasons of abundant flourishing and fruitfulness, seasons of harvesting and eating what has grown, and seasons of dormancy where some of that life seems to disappear or lay quiet and hidden underground. For example, did you know that fruit trees can't be fruitful in season unless they've had a season of dormancy? That restful dormancy season kind of looks like deadness to us on the surface of things, but it's actually a requirement for true life to yield itself later on. When it comes to prioritizing our mental health, we would do well to take a hint from nature around us because actually, well, it's not just that nature is around us, it's that we as humans are part of that nature. We are part of creation and we are intricately interconnected with it. Humans are beautifully intricately designed to flow in rhythms of working and resting, whether that work is for school or for a job or something else. What this means is that we can benefit from flowing and rhythms of work and rest in our day, across our week, and within our year as well. Let's start by looking at our day. When you look at a typical day in your life, is there space for taking a breather or a break, even if just for a few moments? I realize we sometimes feel like we're at the mercy of the schedule that our school or our job dictates to us, but I would contend that we can make small micro choices within that schedule that help us navigate it more smoothly. For example, maybe you cannot change the amount of time you have to go from one classroom to another in your day, but maybe you can choose to take a path that passes by some flowers or some trees so you can glance at them rather than just taking the ugly asphalt path. In the transition times of your day, like let's say you just got out of your last class but soccer practice is about to start, maybe give yourself a moment of zen to just pause, get away from people, close your eyes, and breathe. Hide in the bathroom stall if that's what it takes. This doesn't need to be long, just a few seconds is fine. Hit pause for a moment and collect yourself. Touch down into a quiet space within yourself where you can let the events of the day up until this point wash away and you're making space for what's coming up next in your day. I struggle with this sometimes too because typically when my workday is done, I'm really eager to just move on to driving home going for a run or flopping onto the couch or making dinner but i'm thinking it would be nice to give myself this moment of zen before i do any of that it's kind of like having a little ritual in our day that creates a rhythm of rest it allows us to decompress so what we've been talking about up to this point are examples of having daily rhythms I think one of the most powerful rhythms I've experienced in my own life is actually a weekly one. As with any topic we talk about, this is gonna look different for each of us, but for me personally, I found it very powerful to allow myself to rest one day a week. That may sound unrealistic or ludicrous or impossible to you, but I've practiced this for almost 20 years now, and I started it during a very stressful season of my life, which was being in graduate school, working on my doctorate, which is a high demand school situation, as you might imagine. I'm not saying that to boast, but to say that this weekly day of rest worked well for me, even in a very demanding season. 
Over the years, I've tried to treat my weekly day of rest with flexibility so it can look different from week to week. But typically I'm trying to avoid doing any work or checking my email that day. I'm giving my body and brain a chance to rest and play. Some rest days you might see me playing Zelda, reading a book, playing mandolin, watching a movie, or just hanging out with family or friends. Most of those rest days, you're gonna find me taking an afternoon nap. <laughs> rest days have taught me that the dizzy pace of the world does not depend upon me and my little frenetic efforts to keep things going. And when I enjoy a dedicated day of rest, I actually have more focus and clarity and energy during the remainder of my week. So that's what a weekly rhythm of rest looks like for me. And I'm wondering what it might look like for you and your week. Now, a third rhythm of rest, aside from daily and weekly, is that we can have a rhythm of rest within our year. If you're in school, this is hopefully somewhat built in for you in the sense that your summer might be a little lighter, unless you're in year-round school, of course, but maybe even then there might be a lighter season. Maybe being in sports or other activities or having a job changes that equation in your summer schedule, but Let's figure out ways for ourselves to have a relatively lighter season in our year and actually allow ourselves that relief and that gift. One word of warning for you is that resting is not for the faint of heart. You might actually discover, as I have, that it's a lot harder to rest than you might think. I promise that the rewards of rest are beyond worth it though. All right. So we've talked through rhythms of working and resting in our day, our week, and our year. Have you found any examples of those that have been life-giving for you? If so, share your examples in the comments so that we can learn from each other. In the description below, you'll find some helpful links like a free list of coping tools that you can download. You can also sign up for our signature anxiety program called Peace to the People where we take a deep dive into leveling up your tools for dealing with anxiety. If you found this video helpful, I know everybody says this, but it like really does help YouTube share this content with more people who might be in need of it. If you hit the like button and if you subscribe to our channel. So in the next video, we'll talk about what we're taking in with our senses.